we use it for risk management and we use it for identifying opportunities. Now, risk in terms of what? In terms of business risk for themselves, they want to identify areas with no coverage. They want to identify areas where they have poor capacity and want to increase their more loads or increase more networks. And it's also helping the community. Imagine a scenario where you're stuck in an emergency, incapacitated, you just can't speak. They can locate you based on the nearest network that your phone sent a signal to. And then let's talk a little bit about the commercial opportunity. Right? There are new malls opening in the Philippines every day. Right? And SM Aura opened, I think, a couple of years ago. Right? And if a cell phone operator were to tell a commercial uh, company that, hey, this is a sense of the number of people using Globe that are accessing SM Aura. Right? For me, as a vendor, I'm like, wow, that's a huge number of people, and I want access to those people. Right? So you can always use this data in commercializing what you have and finding folks to actually use and drive decisions based on it. Another example here, uh, but I'd like to use this example to talk about the changing nature of analytics. Analytics back in the days used to be descriptive in nature. You ask a question, they tell you an answer. Now it's changing. It needs to be more predictive and more prescriptive. All of us, I'm sure, visit websites like Netflix, Amazon, don't we? Anybody here not familiar with those sites? I'm sure all of you are, right? Every time you visit these sites, the website is monitoring everything you do. They know where you came from, they know how much time you spent, they can even tell what browser you're using, right? They use that information very effectively. It's, it's, it's called the user experience analytics. So here's an example. You can see that YouTube is recommending to me, thanks to my three-year-old daughter who's been playing with my smartphone recently, and she's watching videos all the time. YouTube is suggesting to me that next time I come, here's what I recommend for you based on what you've been seeing. But technology can only go so far, they don't realize it was my daughter, not me, watching these videos. So now that we've sort of gone into the challenges of big data, understood the nature of change in analytics and consumer behavior, I'll give you three quick sentences that will help you summarize big data. And hopefully this is not too hard to remember. Applying computing capabilities to process complex data to drive decision making. That's all there is to remember about big data. So with all this big data going on and this whole new revolution, obviously there's going to be an impact on big data. And on some of the other aspects of the industry and, and community and Etc. I'm going to talk about two of those areas, and the next one might be of most interest to this population here. So in case you were on your smartphones a while ago, I recommend you stop and pay attention to this. A data scientist. Now the data scientist has been identified by Harvard Business Review as the sexiest job of the 21st century. Do I see more people paying attention? Yes, I do. Right. Now that I have your attention, might as well break into a burst of bubble. It's actually a unicorn that everybody chases. Why do people say that? Because today there's no one person who has all the capabilities to become a data scientist. Well, there are not too many, I would say. Right? So what are the core capabilities of a data scientist? You need a business analyst who understands the client, the data, and how to use that data to make decisions. You need a statistical engineer who will create models and algorithms which will help define that data. And you, of course, need a programmer. You don't do anything without technology in business, right? So I'm going to dive a little more deeper into this later, but 
keep in mind these are capabilities that are actually being highly sought after in this world of big data analytics. So let's quickly go into, I won't take too much time, this is just, I'm going to flash this here. A special mention to the folks at Hadoop who actually built a huge amount of technology to manage all the big data. Our conventional databases and technologies have gone out the door. They can't handle big data and the challenges that the core beasts present. And you've got new technologies now to store, process, and present data. And like I said, I won't go into this too detailed. And this is a slide in the picture if you like. It's on the brochures. So you can hopefully go back and look up some of these technologies. Let's talk a little bit about Thomson Reuters. At Thomson Reuters, we don't call it big data. We call it bold. What is bold? Bold means big data. Open data, linked data. Let's dive a little bit deeper. This is a pretty interesting graph. This is actually one of our products. It's a flagship product called Icon. What you see here is an interactive map, which is actually those small orange triangles that you see are shipping vessels that are carrying LNG and crude oil in and out of Asia. What I'm trying to do here is trying to figure out the inflow and outflow of LNG in and out of Asia. So imagine as a trading, uh, a commodities trader, you can actually predict the supply and demand of LNG. Now why is this a big data challenge? It's a big data challenge because we're using information about the vessels. What's the name of the vessel? Where is it coming from? How much tons of crude oil or LNG can it carry? We're using data from port authorities. Port authorities tell us, is there a strike ongoing that might delay the, the cargo? We monitor weather to make sure we identify if there's a typhoon coming. How is that going to delay the delivery of oil to a specific region and what that means for supply and demand? And of course, we monitor GPS, satellite images, to produce what you see here. And we package it nicely in an interactive map in this picture. Right? So let's, so this is an example, right? I clicked on one of the orange boxes. You can see, I hope, that it's talking about, this is the name of the ship. This is where it's coming from. This is where it's headed. This is the estimated time of arrival. I hope it made it on the 12th of September at 4 a.m. in Korea earlier today. And I might tell you that this snapshot was taken a week ago. So that's exactly what I was talking about in terms of forecasting what's going to happen. And that tells you a good picture of how traders can actually understand what's going to be the supply and demand of crude oil, LNG, whatever you like, based on this analytic over here. I want to talk about open for money. Um, you guys can go look it up on Google. Just remember open for money. It's a very effective tool. Play around with it. I would encourage you to do it. What open for my need? For my need, for just for a second, stands for permanent identifier. All of us are so thrilled with Google. When you go to Google, try saying, tell me the forecasted revenue of Jollibee. Just type that. What you're going to get back is 100,000 hits. 100,000 hits. What are you going to do with that? Which one are you going to read? Can you really trust one of them? Are you going to put your hard on face on it? I don't know. Right? So, permanent identification and linking of data is becoming really important these days. Right? So, permanent identifier here is a site which is accessible on the internet to anybody who wants to play with it. What, it, what you can do with Form ID is you can go in and search for a company, you can see the Johnny D. I pull up the profile, obviously we're holding back a lot of information, but if you log in, you get free access for some time. There are premium services which I want to talk about. But what's good is we're making this data available for free to the community because we want to collaborate with the community. We want to innovate with people like you who have an idea, who can use all the information we have, all the metadata that we collected to your benefit, partner with us for free. 
right? This is a simple example which can actually run thousands of them. There's an option to bulk up for thousand companies and to hit back with this is what we have as an identifier. And you can then probably you know, use one of the services to get whatever data you need. So if you're going to do research in the future and you want to put up a big industry report, one tool you can probably use. So this is a good example. This is also a feature available in, in the Perm IT uh, website. You can go paste any sort of unstructured document. I've used an example here of uh, eBay selling PayPal or spinning off PayPal. PayPal is a company by itself, it used to be part of eBay. What's happened here is I put that text and on the left it structured the data for me automatically. It's highlighting names of companies that have been used and it's highlighting names of people that have been used. Right? And imagine if you're trying to do a research about Warren Buffet, for example, and you have thousands of documents, you can stream all those thousand documents in here and to generate an analytic for you and say Warren Buffett is used in all these different documents. So again, if you're going to do research, maybe you can use this, but you know, investment community uses it for all different kinds of uh, requirements. So the last slide I have here about gold is linked data. So Thomson Reuters has five divisions. We have the corporate division, we have FNR, which I belong to, financial and risk, you have the legal division, you have IP and science, and you have tax and accounting. Now, how do you bring all that data together and help the decision-making process? A good example here is a company like Facebook, right, has a director or the founder, Mark Zuckerberg. He has patents. Those patents are assigned to products. Those products are taxed. That tax goes to the city. So all of that information, so I'm sure you're used to this shopping cart experience when you go on Expedia, you're trying to book a traveler and tells you where you want to go, book flight, book a hotel, book a cab. So it's actually leading you from one place to another. And that's the power of linked data. And in the financial industry, I can tell you, I don't know most of our comes and writers, but no company, none of our competitors, they compete with us in different spaces. But the power of what we call enterprise doesn't, it's unparalleled. There's no other company that has five different divisions coming together, providing data which will actually help drive decision making. So, really quickly, if you have to remember five things from this presentation, I know I spoke a lot, I know I was being very technical at times, so I'm really sorry about that. But if you have to remember five things, it is the four V's of big data, volume, variety, velocity, and veracity. The next thing you want to remember is the changing nature of analytics, descriptive, predictive, and prescriptive. Data scientists, I'm sure most of you will be talking about that when you go back researching it, I think you should. Hadoop in terms of technology, and of course, bold. It's big, it's open, and it's late. It's not just big. So that was it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed that.